Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? It's Kyle Webster here. I'm going to be talking to you guys about the game by Ken Dryden. So let's get started. So, I've just finished reading the game by Ken Dryden, and if you have not, I thoroughly recommend it. I'll go in-depth on one literary lens you could use to view this book, and how that lens relates to the book. This lens I'm talking about will be existentialism. So, let's talk existentialism. Existentialism is a philosophical theory which states that each individual is responsible for giving their own lives purpose and giving themselves meaning. This means people have the right to make their own choices, and what results from those choices will be something that they have to deal with. Now, why I chose this lens for the current book I'm reading, The Game by Ken Dryden, is because of how well it relates to it. It's almost like this literary lens was made specifically for this book. This is also a good lens to use on this book, as this book deals with someone who had great success in their life, someone who is somewhat of a celebrity in the city that he lived in, and shows them dealing with their decisions. By using this lens, I got to see all the issues that someone so big and famous goes through, and relate them to all the decisions I have had trouble making, or had made myself. Now, as I've discussed before, this book is an autobiography by Ken, in which he talks about his last year as a professional hockey player, and his decision to retire after that season. This decision to retire is the biggest example of existentialism in the book, for it shows the stress and comfort that came along with that decision for Ken. It shows how he deals with the decision he has made and how it impacts him before his last season with the Canadians has come to a close. An example of how Ken reacts to his decision comes at the very end of the book, in the epilogue. His reaction to his playoffs is simple. I felt no real nostalgia, no sudden perilous at the brink. This demonstrates that even though Ken was deciding to retire, it was one of the biggest decisions he's ever going to make. He does not regret it and feels it was the right thing to do. It was his time to move on from hockey and let someone else take his place. So some common existentialism questions are how are characters defined and to what extent are they free? Now let's apply those to the game. Ken did not let others define him in his life playing for the Canadians. He had the ability to make his own decisions like not always participating with teammates in pranks pulled in the dressing rooms or being able to make time for his family and go and visit them. He didn't let the fame of being a hockey player corrupt him and make him think that he was better than his family and take that away from him being the family man that he was. Now, the extent that which Ken is free is somewhat limited, but for the most part, <clears throat> he is free. He had a contract with the Canadians, which is legally binding, where if you were to play in the professional hockey league, he was played for the Canadians. But he's also allowed to retire anytime he wished, and besides that, there's not many more restrictions on his contract with the Canadians. He just had to give his best effort every game. Now, using this literary lens helped me better understand the book because it let me analyze the decisions Ken has made. While reading the book, I saw the struggle Ken went through when making hard decisions, and using the literary lens made me ask questions like whether Ken defined himself or let others define him, and whether he took responsibility for his own actions. I saw all the flaws Ken had made, and all the things he wished he could take back. Using the lens made me feel more connected to Ken, and relate to him, as it made him more human. Alright, and that's all for now folks. Thanks for watching. I have now finished reading The Game by Ken Dryden. I've shared my opinions and thoughts on blogs, vlogs. I hope you enjoy it. And good night.